Okay, so my name's Lauren Gertman. Uh, I am the author of the website laurengertman.com. I'm also a regular Today Show contributor. Um, I've been on all of these shows in the past year. Um, I do a lot of media, a lot of radio. Um, and so today I'm gonna talk to you about how to make yourself stand out in media when you're pitching media professionals. I wanna give you a little background in like what happens when you send a pitch and kind of where that should go and where you're sending it. Probably it should not go to where you're sending it and teach you how to do it the right way. Um, so um, before I get started, who here has done television before? Oh good, so lots of us, okay. So was it a good experience? Good experiences, okay. Anybody do national? Okay, yes, good, awesome. So that's why it was a good experience, because you did national. Um, so we're gonna talk about local media, and then we're gonna talk about national media. So national media is its own beast. Um, local media is a little bit different. So today I'm gonna go over media training tips for you as a personal finance blogger. Okay, so the biggest thing that you wanna do, and I think this is a big mistake for people when they say, because I hear from personal finance people all the time, like, oh, I would just love to go on the Today Show, like, how do I get on? And it's like, well, if you're just thinking that and you don't have a plan, you're not getting on the show. Because they get pitched thousands and thousands of times per month, and you need to know why you're going on and the value proposition that you hold to their audience. So you need to do research beforehand. You need to figure out who's watching their show. Is it millennials? Is it moms? Is it parents? Is it guys? Because if you're pitching to a show that's all about men, when you're a woman who is talking about like breastfeeding or something, it's just not gonna work, okay? <laughs> you need to know who the audience is that you're pitching. That's really, really important. And you also need to know what you're about. How do you bring something new to the table? Media people get pitched everything all the time. So why are you different? Why is your company different? Why is what you do different? Why is the way that you talk about things differently? And then once you've decided that, then you can start pitching. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about my experience. So I am a frugal living expert and I was once in $40,000 with a debt. So my book just came out last week called The Recovering Spender and that, the writing of that book helped me really solidify who I was in the media. So I'm not just a regular personal finance expert. I have a story, I have experience, life experience, I have a counseling background, so I was a drug and alcohol counselor before I had children. Uh, oh, by the way, I'm a mom of four, so I have four kids. And my husband works full time with me on the website. Um, so if you see Mark Grootman in the Facebook group, that's, he's not here, but. He's my significant other. Um, we've been married 14 years. And yes, I am young, right? <laughs> um, so anyway, um, when I was writing the book, I really had to think, okay, how do I stand out amongst other personal finance experts? How does your company stand out? So for me, I had to stand out because I have a uh, counseling degree. So I'm looking at the pharmacology and spending in the brain. Um, I also do a lot of personal finance topics. I can talk to the mommy market, which is really, really important in this, uh, in this day and age right now to speak to that mommy market. And then I also can do a lot of fun, silly segments and make myself look stupid. So I'm totally up for that. And so I had to get really creative. So one of the things I want you to do is what do you want to be known for on television? What is your brand about? And how can you make yourself stand out? Now I'm gonna leave uh, some time at the end of this for Q&A because I know pro some of you probably have questions because uh, this isn't just like a one size um, fits all answer. Okay, so what do TV stations want from personal finance experts? Okay, they want results. They want to see that you're making a difference in other people's lives. They don't want it to be about you. So often we pitch television and like, Lou, look what I can do, look what I can do, look what I can do. And they're like, we don't really care what you can do. How are you gonna bring value to our audience in a way that's different, new, and creative? And so, um, so what do TV stations want from personal finance experts? They want research behind what you're doing. If you've worked with a family before and you have case studies, they wanna see that. If you have video footage, they wanna see that. Uh, when I was doing my book, I did a documentary and the, one of the main reasons why I did that documentary is because I think that book trailers don't get enough views and they're dead. And so when I did, I decided to do a different kind of book trailer and I did a documentary to publish, to, 
promote the book instead of um, instead of a traditional book tailor. But another reason I wanted to do that is so that I now have this video every time I pitch media. It's like, look what I did. I helped this family. I can do this for your readers. And now they get to watch this beautiful documentary of how I transformed a family's life. And I was on a Today Show last week, and they used some of the footage for that because that was free for them. They didn't have to hire somebody to do B-roll or anything like that. So think of ways to create content around what you're already doing to use to pitch to media. So if that's case studies, videos, uh, digital things that you can send to them, a press kit. Um, but keep in mind, so when you're pitching, if you, um, let's say local, local media, okay? You need to find um, a producer of a show, right? And you need to pitch them. Well, just keep this in mind that most of the time, those producers are right out of college. They have to check everything with their superior. And so you're not really pitching the decision makers. And so if you want to pitch, don't pitch the low level executive. Try and pitch a senior producer, because those are the people that are going to be able to make more decisions. Okay, so um, when, when we're sending stuff to some of the bigger shows, we're sending it directly to the executive producer or a senior producer. We don't even bother with um, the, the associate producers because most of them are right out of college and they don't know what the heck they're doing. Um, and they're too afraid to say yes to something that could cost them their job. So they want to see your new and different. Um, they want to see fun stuff. They love props. So props are always a good thing if you're going to pitch media. You need to think about how you're going to develop a segment around a topic idea using props so that it's engaging um, and that kind of thing. Now, if you're going on a hard news show, that's a little different. If you're going on like Fox and Friends or something like that, you don't want to bring props because that would just be really strange because nobody has props on there. Which brings me to the point of the fact that you need to watch the shows before you pitch them and you need to watch what kind of segments they're doing. We do a lot of research in my team. We watch every show, we figure out exactly who they're booking, what kind of segments they're doing, and then we're gonna try and emulate it and make it better. So you need to be watching the shows that you're pitching. So if I'm pitching Fox News, I'm gonna pitch a very hard news story. If I'm pitching the Today Show, I'm gonna pitch Depending on what hour of the Today Show I'm trying to pitch, if I'm pitching Kathy Lee and Hoda, it's going to be a fun, prop-heavy segment. And then if I'm pitching somebody um, like a local show, a lot of times it'll be more of a heartfelt local story. Look at how I worked with this local family. This is a local event that I'm doing. And um, so that's really important uh, when you're pitching. Okay. So now we're going to talk about how to organize a really nice, good segment. Um, one thing that I want you to keep in mind when you are pitching is, so I talked about who you want to pitch. You want to pitch um, how you find these people. LinkedIn is a great resource. So LinkedIn is like going to be your best friend for finding producers. You can find out where they are, what their email addresses are, send them emails, um, and then pitch them. And if you don't hear back, you can send them a follow-up, but don't send more than one follow-up because then you get to be the annoying person that continues to follow up with them. Um, usually, if I don't hear back after two pitches, then I say, okay, I'm done. I don't want to do this anymore. Um, so, so how to organize a kick butt segment? Um, you first want to make sure that you are watching the news probably a week before you actually go on. Because you want to make sure you're not going to do something that they already did. Now, typically, actually, just before I came on here, um, I'm going on the Hallmark Channel again on Monday. and that show is so scripted out that we have the entire scripts for both segments I'm doing already made out. Now, do I have to say them word for word? No. But to develop a kickback segment, you need to realize that a good segment on national television takes about 100 hours to create. 100 hours. And that is going back and forth with topic ideas because they change sometimes like five minutes before I go on stage. True story, happened on the T.D. Jake show. They changed the entire show on me five minutes before we went on stage. And I just had to wing it. Okay, I'll figure it out. We'll do it. Um, and that comes from years of experience. But you need to figure out what makes a good segment by watching the things that you've done. And then you also need to figure out how you are going to stand above the rest. So how do you do that? You watch, like I said, the shows. But then you need to figure out how, um, I'm trying to think about some examples of this in my own, my own experience. Um, I always try to bring in something a little bit different, a little bit unknown. So for me, doing a segment, because I do frugal living, I did, um, 
a segment on the strangest things that you can sell on eBay. And it was like um, toilet paper rolls and pine cones and egg cartons and um, like old hair that you can sell. And so that is a weird personal finance topic, but the media loves it. Now, would I ever do that? No. Um, but so if you're thinking about your topics, you got to think about those different ways. Now, if you're hard news, okay, if you're doing hard news, like if you want to go on Fox News or CNN or something like that, um, you need to have the talking points already figured out in your head so you know exactly what you're talking about. The producer needs to have all of those talking points so that they know what to ask you about. But then you need to rehearse and prepare for the questions that they're going to ask you. You can't go on television unprepared. And so one of the ways that I prepare myself ahead of time is I, I have all the talking points and I rehearse with my husband. So I'm like, okay, Mark, you get to be Kathy Lee. And then he gets, we kind of go back and forth and we talk about it and see what kind of props we're going to bring. Um, so, so when we're talking about organizing a kickback summit, you really need to practice, practice, practice. Have those talking points that you're going to talk with the producer already ahead of time so that they have it. And then be prepared for anything. Be prepared for any kind of questions that they have going for you. OK. Now this is a question that I get very often. People say, well, I will go on as long as they mention my website. Okay, because why would I go on to help them if they're not even going to share my website? And I can't tell you how many times I've been on national television and they don't say anything about my website. And you know what that does? It adds, I think, for every single national TV show that I get a report, okay? And they give you, at the end of the show, I get a report that says what amount of brand value that adds to your brand. And every single time, for every single Today Show segment, it adds $23,000 in brand equity to my brand, okay? So they might not say my name, but you know what? Now I'm a Today Show contributor, and I can charge this much more for speaking engagements. Now I have a badge on my website. Now I'm an author. Now I have all of these different brand um, positions that I get just from being on television. So if you're going on air, if you get booked and you're going on air, this is the question I always ask them. How do you plan to identify me on air? It's a super important question. Um, and that gives you a gauge as to what they're going to say. Are they going to say, we're going to call you um, mommy blogger? And I'm like, uh, uh like, no, we're not going there. This is what I would like for you to call me. And it opens up that conversation because a lot of times they don't know how to deal with us. You know, they don't know how to deal with business owners or personal finance people. So if you tell, just ask the question, how do you plan to identify me on air? And then you'll know. And you also need to ask um, how you, uh, what they're going to put in the lower third. So the lower third is that the block at the bottom of the TV screen. And that tells you, you know, they'll say your name and your website name or your name or your book name. And so you need to make sure that you tell them what you would prefer. And then be okay with them not saying your website or your business. You have to be okay with that. It's like taking one for the team because it adds, you know, $23,000, $30,000 for a big national TV show. It adds that much brand value to your current brand. So um, look at it that way instead of the other way around. Okay. So I'm going to leave about um, 10 minutes. I just, my son just texted me and said, Mom, can you please play Pokemon Go? He's been bugging me all day. Um, OK, so, so now you've pitched the show. You have an idea. You talk about it. You um, get to a producer. They say, OK, we'll have you on. You give them your talking points. You figure out what you're going to talk about. And now you're going to ask questions about if you need props or not, if you, uh, anything about travel, if they're going to pay for travel. Now, local television, um, a lot of times, is very, very, they have very, very low budgets. Very, very low budgets. So um, you don't get paid. A lot of times you won't even get a ton of traffic to your website from local media, but you need to do local if you're going to start doing national and climb up to the national level. So you need to get and practice. So I did local media for four years before I even did anything national. Um, and I, because I aced my skill at a local level, 
And then because of that, I got to go on to national. But so when you've done this segment, you've, you've done all your talking points, you've achieved the segment, and you feel like you did a good job, it's always important for me. I always ask to meet with the executive producer before I leave, the head producer, just to say thank you. That's like a big thing of mine because I want to make sure that I get in front of their face. So I always ask them, can I just, you know, if they're available, can, you, can I please talk to the executive producer just to say thank you or something like that. Um, and then uh, hopefully you can get to their office, give them your business card. If you have any other segment ideas, I have a one sheet that I sometimes give them depending on the station. And then um, I just tell them I'd love to come back on, you know, anytime you have any openings or is it okay if I send you ideas, especially for local because those shows that are like, like we have one 10 a.m. show, so it's not the most popular broadcast, and they're like dying for content, dying. And so uh, I always, you know, can I send you over more ideas? What kind of ideas does really well with your audience? And then pitch them the thing. So I ask a lot of questions as well, because you want to make sure. So once you've done the segment, that's really, really important that uh, you need to follow up and then what to do next. Um, if I do a national segment, Every time I work on a national show, I send flowers the next day to the producer. No matter how many times I've been on the show, I send flowers, or if I know they really like cookies or something like that, I'll sell a cookie gram or something like that, because I want to stand out to them. So feel free to use my, my trick. I don't really care. Um, so just I send flowers to, that's really loud. Um, I send flowers to all the producers because I want them to know how much I value them. And um, a lot of times, uh, you know, flattery goes a long way. So Christmas cards, all of that kind of stuff. All the producers that I work with on a regular basis get Christmas cards, family pictures, all that kind of stuff because I want to make sure that I'm developing a really strong relationship with them so that they come back to me for all of those segments. Um, another thing that you can do is, um, so some of the shows, I'm going to tell you a funny story. Um, some, of, some of the shows like that are really like just starting up, they have no idea what they're doing. You've got a, a crew of college students running a TV show, and I think people are so, uh, think that TV is so glamorous, but the amount of airport bathrooms that I have gotten changed in in the past month and had to sleep in cars because I, I was driving through the night and I just got too tired, it's, it's, it's glamour on camera, but behind the scenes, it's a heck of a lot of work, and you have to be willing to put it in. But for me, um, I think that one of the big things that I do is I'm always going above and beyond. So if I have a TV producer from a national show email me and say, hey, Lord, I've got some questions. Can you hop on the phone? I'm like, sure, that's no problem. And even if I have nothing to do with the segment that I'm doing, so you need to develop relationships with, with them. Follow them on Snapchat. Follow them on Twitter communicate with them, become friends with them, then they will invite you back. It's not just about you, 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 you. Let's help out these shows, because a lot of these shows are really struggling. Their, their ratings are way down. They're competing with other shows. Their shows are at risk of being canceled all the time. And so how can we help them bring our audience to them and really kill the segment and get really good ratings for them? That's how you're going to get coming back if your ratings are good. So... Um, so that's, that's a little bit in a nutshell about what I do, um, but I'll tell you a funny story. This, and this shows how much I care about television is I got a, I got a phone call from T.D. Jakes. Everybody know, everybody know who T.D. Jakes is? So I was on his show a few weeks ago, and um, he got a personal finance question in the middle of a show, and he didn't know the answer to it, so he stopped the entire show and called me on my cell phone <laughs> on the spot. I'm like, hi, TD. Um, sure, I can answer your question. And that's the kind of guest that you want to be, they, where they have your cell phone number in your phone, and they call you because somebody, they don't know how to answer a personal finance question. Um, and so after I was done, they started taping again, and he even gave, he was like, I just got off the phone with Lauren Gertman, frugal living expert, and she helped me answer this question. So I got a shout out for that because I was willing to take his call.